What? It doesn't, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't. Oh my gosh. It doesn't block out the password. So we should be able to install this, no problemo. So far, so good. Yeah, I'm actually very surprised it's working okay. F <laughs> <laughs> that explains why it's not working well. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Really? That's just great. You know, I'm doing pretty great today too because I ordered a pizza and the pizza man decided to stay again. Hey, it's Maniac Mike, look at that. Hello. Hey, he's back. He's gonna help me with some cool shit today. And uh, we have a G3, as you can see, with the big letters on the side in case you couldn't tell. I don't remember what OS was on it, but I think I used it as a developer preview testing machine at one time. So the goal is we're gonna find out what actually is on here and then we're gonna do a fresh installation sensation and test drive, as per tradition, of Mac OS 10.0 Developer Preview 1. This is such an old version of OS 10 that it's pre-Aqua. It has none of the Aqua user interface stuff in it whatsoever, so this will be fun. Uh, Maniac Mike, oh shit, I just dropped my CD. <laughs> Maniac Mike, would you be so helpful and walk all the way over there and press yeah. the power button? Yeah. Thank you, sir. I want him to contribute here. Ready? Go for it. Here we go. Did you press it right? I did press <laughs> it. It didn't turn on. <laughs> Try again. F firmly grasp it. Um, I think. Uh, nope, the power's on. That light's just burned out. Oh. Shit. Yeah, we're not getting any what? Power to this. Hang on. It was working. Oh, f. <laughs> what the hell? What? Oh my gosh. Seriously. <laughs> what? Hang on, we're gonna have to do something you can't do on any Apple computer nowadays. Open it up. Hey. And, um, oh yeah, that'll do it. That's definitely not looking good. I have no idea what I'm talking about. It's really f***ing dusty. Holy shit, I had no idea it was this bad. Why isn't this working? <laughs> All right, guys, so here's what we know. We know that it's not working. What we don't know is how to make it work. So we're gonna have to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back after this message. It's working. Okay. Okay, we got a question mark and a happy face, so... Do you have a system partition? I should? Hey, hey. happy Mac. All right. So let's see what's actually on here. Got the old uh, beach ball going up there. So it's got to be 10.1 or earlier. Or 10. It has to be 10.0 to 10.1 because they changed it on Jaguar. Yeah, Jaguar is when it's changed to just Ooh. the Apple logo on boot up. Mm-hmm. Oh, listen to that. Mm. You don't get that joy with SSDs anymore, man. Well, <laughs> this is sure taking its time. So the cool thing about the G3 is I'm going to be doing quite a bit with this thing soon. Actually, it will be featured in the premiere episode of Volume 2 of Vintage Apple Vault. It was a very historic machine in Apple's history, so we have a very fun episode coming up with that soon. In the meantime, we're going to just have some fun with it and get the developer preview on here. Okay. <laughs> any any minute now. Like how, how many how many gray hairs have like I've developed now just waiting for this thing to load like <laughs> you, say at least 50. <laughs> oh, he counted. <laughs> that's that's good. Hey, it said at least. I don't know exactly how many. Sure, at least 50. Yeah, that's true. It's really going to town in there. Whoa. <laughs> that explains why it's not working well. Um, yeah, okay, so version 10.0 is on here. The clock is set to April 30th, 1999. So this must have been running a developer preview at one time. But since it obviously doesn't work anymore, that just justifies the reinstall even better. So this worked out very well. At least the kernel panic is self-aware. <laughs> I, I love that. Like, I've always thought that was really, really cool. All right, well... If you'd like to contribute again, go ahead and throw this in the old uh, CD tray after you hard shut it down. Yep. Or actually, just press the restart button. All right. I got the option key here. Pop that baby back in. Awesome. 
Good job, Gordon, inserting that CD and all. I can see your MIT education really pays for itself. You ever play Half-Life 2? Oh, yeah. Okay. Just making sure that reference didn't, like, go nowhere. <laughs> no, you're supposed to load a, the... No, oh, what? It didn't load the boot picker. Okay. Well, maybe I should have held down the C key. But it looks like... Well, we got a cursor. Yeah, we got a cursor, so... I think it might have booted into the CD. It sounds like it did. Oh, yeah, I can hear it moving. Yep, 8.6. Nice. Man, we're not even past the loading screen and already we've had like two catastrophic failures. This is gonna be a f***ing great day. I'm ready. As long as we don't set up a fire alarm, I'm fine. Yeah, we're talking about it on Twitter. All right, what, yeah, Michael's got the hookup. What's the scoop, Brainiac Brent and Maniac Michael? Maniac Mike's Here we go the social again media with an, expert. With another fire alarm, guys. Yeah. Oh shit, is that the fire alarm in the lobby? Did you hear that? Is that the alarm in the lobby or the stairwell? That's a stairwell. That's a stairwell? An alarm on the 20th floor. Fire, fire alarm. Just like last night. Oh, oh. Never mind. It's oh. an announcement. It's an all clear announcement. Oh. Oh. Alright, let's... Oh shit, it auto... Whoa! Dude. Hey! It auto-adjusted to, like, the native resolution of this monitor. That's freaking crazy. We have been presented with late-breaking news about Mac OS X developer preview. Let's go to our reporter, Maniac Might Out... Ma Maniac f I Life. F I Life. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to our reporter, Maniac Mike, out in the field. Mike, what's the late-breaking news about Mac OS X developer preview? I actually have no idea because it is very late. That <laughs> it's, it, it, it makes not e even any perfect sense in this type of year. So you can use this with specific hardware configurations, a Power Mac G3 blue and white. Yeah, so only with a certain G3s this thing will work with. Thankfully, we have one it's compatible with, so we should be able to install this, no problemo. Ooh, the old splash screen. What would you call that texture? Like, that texture was, like, always used, like, in the 90s. Have you ever installed an old OS like this from Apple? From a very long time ago, trying to get... Uh one of my iMacs to get to boot into Classic. Oh, fun. Check the installation manual for a list of support computers. Well, we already did that, so homework complete. Let's, uh... <laughs> All right, Mike, you gotta read this for me, because uh, I'm illiterate. Can you read the whole software license agreement? I don't know, but it looks like it's easier to read than the iTunes agreement. I was gonna say, the iTunes agreement's probably, like, five times longer than this. And talks about, like, nuclear war or some shit, doesn't it? I mean, it's, like, 110 pages last time I checked. Holy shit. All right, click continue to install a full version of Mac OS X. That's great. Let's take a look at the languages. We could put Japanese on here, but I'm not Japanese, so I'm not going to do that. Customize. Let's do... We need the essential system software, obviously. BSD subsystem. Documentation, demos, Mac OS. Can we just uncheck Mac OS? Do we really need that? I mean, it lets me uncheck it, so I don't know what that actually let's is. Let's just keep it just in case. <laughs> yeah, just in case. We'll hit continue there, and... Destination disk. Oh, you know what? Is there a way for me to mount the disk that's in here? Because I don't see it on the desktop. I'd like to see what files are on it before I just do this, because I may have to f do some formatting. Because it looks like there's already a system on here. It's just crashing. All right, so let's see what we got here. We have... Oh, it's not mounted. Okay. Um, hmm. So I could initialize it from here, but it's going to wipe everything out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if it'll install over the current installation without having to do an initialization. If how, it much, how much space do you have on that disk? That's an excellent question. Because we could just partition it. Oh, wait, I, I can see it right there. Yeah, it looks like we have, it's an 8 gig disk, or I guess almost a 9 gig disk. The disk has enough space for a basic installation. Well, that's fantastic. Let's see if that'll actually... Okay, configuring your computer to... Oh, all right, well, restart it is. I have a feeling this is not going to work, though. <laughs> Oh, shit! Oh! We got something! Okay, so far, so good. Welcome to Macintosh. Creating Mac OS X volume. Okay. I'm guessing we just let it to its thing until it does something that requires our attention? Well, you know, it, it does say please wait, so we must follow the computer's instructions very carefully, because you don't want to make them angry. At least it's being nice about it. <laughs> it, it asks politely. Okay, so 14 files copied. 2% done, 28, 41. It's actually doing shit, so I think we have some success here. So let's just analyze the beautiful, like, 90s design here. So you have, like, this 
I don't know what Apple called it, but they used it a lot. It's almost like a. It's I don't know it. I don't know the name of it, but I remember seeing yeah. the option in in Photoshop. Yeah, like that is a texture I remember seeing there. It, it's kind of I don't know. It's almost like. Their, their cases, like their espresso cases, had that kind of texture. It's like a plasticky looking thing, but they used it a lot. And then you have like this nice, <laughs> like bevel look, like with the OS X logo and these beautiful long drop shadows <laughs> going on here. Uh, I know Brainiac Prince a fan of big drop shadows, so that's for you. And then uh, down here, I don't know what typeface or font uh, that still is. It doesn't look like Chicago, so it's probably a uh, charcoal. That might be charcoal. Bust out your Adobe Capture app. That's what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was doing. It might be too small for it to pick up, but I think that's charcoal. Here we go. Sponsored by Adobe. Oh, wow, that's amazing how it just highlighted it like that. We are in the 20th century, ladies and gentlemen. You heard me right. 20th century. That's what we got. What the frick? I Ingeborg stripes? What the shit? No. I have to fact check that. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of that font in my life. Actually, that would be a typeface, a typeface, uh, I believe, because it's a family. Wow, oh, this is just cruising. All right, and we're gonna reboot now. We're configuring network right, right now, and by we, I mean the computer's doing all the work and we're just watching it do it. So far, so good. Yeah, I'm actually very surprised it's working okay. Knock on a lot of <laughs> wood right now. <laughs> oh. Oh, it went away. We scared it. <laughs> you scared it. We have menu bar. Hey, shit. We do have a menu bar. Within a ginormous package up here. And a package down here. So, yeah, it's reading all these PKG files. We could pause this. Oh, okay. Oh, now it's doing... Oh, shit. Installing all these things. Let's see. Let's futz around in the menu bar for now. About installer. All right. Doug Weeby, Matt Watson, Grant something or other. Jean-Pierre Cloudard. <laughs> I don't know it's French. I'm sorry, Jean. Minimize window. Oh, that's window shade. Bullshit. That's not a minimize. <laughs> Services. Nothing's in there. All right. Can I tear these out? Oh, shit! I can ah! see. Yeah, they still tear out like in next step. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. That is something. Oh, and you can tear the submenus out. <laughs> Dude, I could never get used to this. I, I don't know. I wouldn't I just like the menu bar too much. Also, notice how the menu bar does not have any curves. Like this like, Yeah, they they're not simulating the like CRT aperture kind of thing. Even though they would still do that in, in, the, fir in yeah. the first version of OSN and even in, I believe, uh DP three and DP four. They did it all the way through Tiger. Yep. Yeah. Th so it, this, because this predates Leopard by a long shot. Oh yeah, by a long shot. Yeah, by like eight years. Yeah. Um, but Leopard got rid of it. Now there was a cool app called Displaperture. I think it's Display Aperture or however they pronounced it, and it it would actually simulate. Yeah, I remember the rounded my, corners. I remember my friend telling me that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I used that a long time ago. Apple was very like keen on rounding corners for everything, like even the buttons. I mean, when Jobs first pushed for that, he was like, you come outside with me. Like, there's rounded rectangles everywhere. He was very adamant about doing that. And fun fact for those who didn't know, the 68K processor in the original Mac couldn't do square roots, so it couldn't draw circles, so you couldn't draw a rounded rectangle. So I think it was Bill Atkinson that led this uh, little task. He found a way to use addition methods to actually like draw the rounded corners of the buttons because he couldn't do square roots. So there you go, software workaround. And there's all the nibs, which are compiled interface builder documents. What if we can, there's a maximize button here. Can we, oh shit, oh. <laughs> we do... that's a little too big. We can get, we... whoa, this got hot in here all of a sudden. It's way too much for me. Installing cores, bitch, installing cores. Hey, would you like a receipt today? I'll give you a receipt. Oh, this one's installing nowhere. Okay. All right, we're on BSD now. Just look at it. Man, man. <laughs> he was bitten by a man and given the powers of a man. And now it's man with two N's and seven and man four. Man four, six. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably, um, and I'm guessing manual pages for the... Most likely. Yeah, for the terminal. Uh, I'm guessing that's what that's from because those are usually... That's usually what that abbreviation means. Quacker.h. All right, that's a new one. So right now we're installing Blue Box, which was the name 
for classic support. So this would let classic macOS applications run in the new macOS 10 environment. Because the OS was rewritten, the programs wouldn't just run natively. You needed some sort of, I guess it was emulation, not 100% sure what the technical term is, but the blue box system would allow that to run. This later got called classic. It got renamed from blue box and yellow box was the new environment for new applications to take advantage of all the new features. And that eventually got named Coco. And then in between you had the carbon environment, which let you tweak your classic applications to run with more of the new benefits of OS 10 without having to do a full rewrite in the Coco environment. So a little bit of history there for you. And we're going to developer tools now. All right, well, the blue bar is almost all the way full. That means we're almost done, but we're just getting started. We're gonna test drive the system and see how it works because it's really cool. It's a hybrid of Next Step and Mac OS 8 slash OS 9 really because it it's kind of like OS 10 before it really became OS 10. It's all still platinum and Next Step-y, no aqua or anything. That came a little bit later. All right, looks like we got beach ball so we should be restarting soon. Oh, we got a loading box. We do have a loading box, sweet. Hopefully this is good to go. Then we can have some fun. They had some demo packages on here too, so that should be fun. I can't believe it's actually working. Shit, yeah, it looks like it's loading the desktop. Welcome to the setup ass, assistant. Sorry. <laughs> Let's actually do this. We could probably maximize this shit too. Woo! I see it. What's up? I like how the icon on Setup Assistant, mm -hmm. they did carry that over into yeah. the, the future versions, but they got rid of the traffic light. Yeah, they don't have the signals They don't have here. the traffic light, but they have the... Like the little tuxedo. They have the tuxedo icon. With a bow tie. Very pretty. All right. So, enter password. Okay. So, let's see. Assigning an administrator or root password protects against malicious accidental... Oh, wait, hang on. Th this looks like it's a contextual icon because now it's got like a police badge on it. Yeah. So. Password. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Just remember that. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll click the right arrow to continue. <laughs> F*** you! Okay, to configure your Ethernet ports properly, you must enter information about how each port will be used. Uh... Well, we don't have a f ton of options right here. <laughs> So, TCP, IP, and Apple Talk. Pretty much. Click. All right, configure manually, configure automatically. How do you want to configure the host name and default router for this computer? Well, there's no place like home, so we're gonna do that. Oh, hey, you got a little cursor icon change for the window resizer. Hang on a second, you can, what the f What, hang on, can you do it from up here? What? Hang on, I'm freaking out here because that's a feature they got rid of in the final release of Mac OS X. You could not resize from all corners. You can only resize from down here. And then they added that back because people were angry. They added it back in Lion, like yeah. years later. Oh my gosh. So I wonder why they got rid of that. Shit. All the things you learn. Anyway, um, let's just call it localhost. Very original. No, this computer's just another node. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> How do you want to configure the IP address? Eh, uh, dynamic. Would that, be, would that be automatic yeah. then? Yeah, I was like, it's gotta be that. Um, <laughs> I don't think net info is going to exist say, anymore. I don't think that's a thing. These are Can we just still network. skip that? Yeah. Still network. A lot of network options. Area. All right, this I know how to use. So let's go to Belize. Nope, not really. Um, Bogota. What the freaky frack? All right, Boise. Close enough. Oh, there's only like so many options. So let's do... You, uh, what the, what? Is that seriously it? What? Should we use the Mystery Science Theater time zone? All right, well, we need usernames, so let's make one. I'll be Crazy Ken. My login name will be Ken. My password will be Ken. No, that's, what? It doesn't, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't. Oh my gosh. It doesn't block out the password. Okay, well, eh, not the most secure thing, but there you go, now you know my password, hooray. Let's make one for Maniac Mike. What? The, does the M key not work on this keyboard? <laughs> wow. Of all the letter, every other letter works, except M. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we just will give you an account. Oh, uh, shit. No, I, could, I thought it's something. What'd you think of? Give me that keyboard. Oh, here you go. It's only, it only reaches that far though. Or that eh. far, or that far, or that far. Actually, it reaches pretty far. Go ahead. Let's oh. do, because, does N work? Yes. N. Can do. Okay. N. 
Naniac Nike. Because the N the M key doesn't work. <laughs> and then it'll just be Nike. Wait, what? What? How does the M key work not what the f Okay, change it back. Ch how, click up there. How, oh, I, sorry. I can just tab. Yeah, you could tab. Or maybe you can't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> how does the, the edit key work when you press it, but not when I press it? That's bullshit. Today on Peppermint Park, we're introducing the letter M. This keyboard is not like, doesn't have like touch ID built in. I know it doesn't. All right, super secret password. One through six. <laughs> zero, 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 one. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> it works. Oh my gosh. Show login window at startup, yes. Review settings, go yeah. ahead. And here it goes. We got a checkered flag because we won the race. And we need to restart. Okay, here we go. I wonder if there's a verbose mode. Wanna try it? Let's do it. We'll command V at the bong. Oh hey. yeah, there's a verbose mode, all right. File system clean, skipping checks. Tuning system, I had never paid attention to that. That's a thing it says. Sounds a little low. There we go, you're tuned, you're good to go. All right, shit. I love the old restart icon. It's like, like what? <laughs> Is it like a game of breakout? Like boing, just, oh Well, I guess gosh. we should log into you. Your yeah, account. let's um, log into Ken with my super secret password. Oh, now it starts now, of course. Yeah, it's actually a little more secure that way. All right, let's click the little house button. 